Snappa is an online tool that is catered to non-designers that still want to be able to create interesting and intuitive content for their social media platforms and websites. And even if you are fluent in design, this tool can definitely save you a lot of time by using their library of pre-made templates. And I'm going to go through Snappa and show you how you can use this tool to create images for your social media profile, websites, and create thumbnails for your videos. The first thing you need to do is register with Snappa. And I'll leave my field link in the description below. The process is simple and you don't need any payment information when you register unless you want to go get the pro version right away. But all you have to do is click this button right here. Once you're done registering, you'll see this screen. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see all the things you can create from social media posts, blogs, headers, and banners, ads, and you can even create a custom image size if you don't like any of the presets. But the cool thing about this is that you don't have to guess the size of the image you need for each platform because they already did all the work for you. And all you gotta do is choose one of the presets for the platform you want. So I've just created this Facebook page and now I need to create some interesting new pictures for it. So what do we need to make our Facebook page here? It looks like we need a cover photo, a profile picture, and maybe we might even make a post image here. A, the images that we create can also be used for a business page as well. So you can use it for both accounts. And if you're interested in creating a business page, then check out my step-by-step -step tutorial that I'll leave in the description below. Uh, there might even be a thumbnail at the end screen if it's already been released. Anyway, let's go ahead back to Snappa and create a cover photo. All right, so once we're back at Snappa, you can go ahead and scroll down a bit until you see the Facebook uh, cover photo icon. And once you find it, go ahead and click on it. And you'll see two options here. You can either create a cover from scratch or you can go ahead and choose one of the existing templates. So I'm going to make images for a fictional Facebook page that focuses on fitness and exercise. And I'm going to choose one of the templates simply because it's just convenient. But if you don't like any of these templates, then you can go ahead and create your own. But uh, let me go ahead and scroll down a bit and let me see what we can find. I kind of like this one because it does have a person exercising there. But let me see here. But, you know, we'll just go ahead and use this one. And if you click on it, it will bring us over to the editing page. And it'll put our template into the workspace over here. And the first thing you're going to notice are the guidelines on your template. And let's zoom out a bit down here by using the slider bar. So you can see the whole image without having to scroll up or down. And then the guidelines show you the image responsiveness for devices that people are viewing your content. And anything you put into safe area will be visible on all platforms and it will adjust the size to the user's screen. So if they're on a desktop, then you can see the whole picture. And if they're on a mobile device, then you'll only see items in this area right here. And the center is generally your focus area, and everyone will see that regardless of the user's screen size. So the first thing you can do is to toggle on and off the grid lines or zones from your picture by clicking this button up here. And that's just to help you see what the picture in the background looks like more clearly so that, you know, you can decide whether or not you want to keep the picture or change it. You can also make adjustments to objects as well. So if you just go ahead and click some of these objects here and then you can drag it around to the position where you want it. And what you'll notice is that there is a bit, a bit of a hesitation as you're moving the objects around. Like it's some type of gravity, you know, pulling the, to certain spots on the image. And that's because of the snap to grid effect right up here. And right next to that, you can see a button that you can toggle on and off to see where the grid is located on your image. Both these options help you align objects on the image, and you can choose to use them if you want. But I'm going to turn it off for now so I can fully see the image. But you can see that after turning them off, all the movement starts to feel really smoother from all the objects that you place there. And while we're here, we might as well make adjustments to the objects, like double-clicking on this text to change it to whatever you want. So my idea was to create a Facebook page to promote a fitness program. And that's why I chose a template because it has someone working out. So I'm going to go ahead and type what I want to say. So uh, let's go ahead and type in stronger right here. And I'm just going to double click on this and it's going to highlight the letters and I can start typing over it. But if I click one more time, then it will let me go ahead and continue typing after the words. But I don't want any words anyway. So I select the whole image and just type over it. All right, so I can head over to the panel over here and then edit the text. And I'm just going to go click here and find a cool font to use. And let me see here. There you can see there's a lot of fonts that you can use. And you can also add more fonts, but then you need to upgrade to the Pro version. 
but for now we're just going to go ahead and use what's available. And you can also see what the text looks like just by hovering over the name. Um, the Black Ops font here looks pretty good, so I'll select that. And some of these options to make your uh, text uh, bold or italic might be grayed out, but depending on the font that you choose, you can click on each of them to see what looks good or not. And you can also change the size of the font if you like. Um, you can use the up and down arrows or just type in the number here. And I think it looks good there for now. And you can change the alignment of the text and you can change the text color. Let's see, you can use some predefined colors or even customize your own by clicking right here. And if you do customize a color, it's probably a good idea to save that color if you plan on using it again for other objects and text. And it will make it a whole lot easier for you later. And you can change the spacing of the letters by using a slide over here like this. And you can do the same thing with the height of the box that your text is in by also using the slider. And below that you can see a section for shadows. And this is very useful if you want to use letters that are light in color that are on top of a light background. And it also helps create more depth in your text. So let me go ahead and make some adjustments here. And I'm going to remove this other text that I don't really need by clicking on it. And I can just press the delete key on my keyboard. And you can also delete the item by selecting the item and then going up to the trash can icon up here. And then you can press it. And we'll go ahead and do that with this one as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and click on the background tab over here and click on the remove button and then click on the color tab and we'll choose a lighter background like uh, this one. So let's click on the text again and we'll go over to the offset section and increase it and we'll make it a little bit bigger so it'll be easier for you to see. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. All right, so let's also toggle on our zone since the background is so light that we can't tell if the letters are in the safe zone or not. And that looks pretty good right there. Yeah, that's better. So the letters are kind of outside of the area. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. Um, let me see. I'm going to go to shrink the letter size a bit and then center it. And then I'll probably reposition it too. Yeah. All right. So that looks pretty good right there. And then you can see the text, but it just doesn't look that good. So you can go ahead and make it look a little better by adding a little bit of depth in your text by dropping a shadow behind it. So let's go ahead over to the offset field and change it. And depending if you increase it or decrease it, it will determine which direction your shadow is going to offset behind the text. So if I increase my offset by one, then the shadow of the text goes a little bit to the right and a little bit below the text. And if you increase it, then it'll keep going in that direction. Now, if you lower the offset number, then it'll put the shadow in the opposite direction. And it's up to you on whether which direction you like to use more. And it, you can see that it does help the text stand out a bit better on a lighter background. But you can do it with a dark text uh, as well. Um, but I'm not going to do it here. But you kind of get the idea. And I think I'm going to leave it right here because I think it looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and blur my shadow a bit because it does look a bit harsh to my eyes. So I'll select the blur field here and increase it so it softens the shadow a little bit. And that looks pretty good right there, so I'll leave it at that. And you can also change the opacity with the slider down below. And I'm going to leave it as it is, Max, because I want the letters to stand out a bit, so I'll leave it as it is. So you're going to notice that this looks nothing like the template that we used earlier. And this happens to me a lot, because sometimes I get into that creative zone, and I just end up with a design that looks completely different from the original template. And this is a good thing, because I can basically show you how to create it from scratch. All right, so let's start out with finding us a background picture. And you don't have to use one if you don't want to, but at least I'll show you how to do it. And let's go over to the background tab, and then we'll select the photos tab here. So I could scroll down and browse through all the pictures, and but that probably take me a long time. So I'll narrow it down to like a specific keyword. And since we're creating a cover for fitness, I'll just type in the keyword fitness, and then I can just press enter. Or you can just hit the search icon, it does the same thing. 
And one thing I make note of as you're searching through the images here, if you hover over the icon on the image, you'll notice that some of the images are sourced from services like Pexels or Unsplash. And the same terms of use will apply here as well. But I'm just throwing it out there as an option that you could use to make it easier to find your images that you're looking for versus using it here. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's completely your preference. And this picture here looks like a person lifting some weights, and that looks pretty good. So let me go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to turn on my zones, see how the image fits, and it looks pretty good. Simple and clean. But uh, let me see what else I could do. I think it needs more content. So let me go ahead and add some new text to the uh, canvas here. All right, so let's go ahead and click that text button up here. And I'm going to choose to add a heading. And it really doesn't matter which one you choose. You know, you can always make adjustments to it later. So I'm just going to choose the big one here because I know that I'm going to be using it. And I could change the settings to match our existing word. But then, you know, we did make one earlier. So it'll probably be just easier to copy that stronger text and then paste it here. So let me go ahead and get rid of this new text that we just made. And delete that. And then we'll select our stronger text up here. And then we can click on the duplicate icon up on the top. And now there we have it. We have an exact copy of the letters we modified earlier with all the settings that we did. And you don't have to use that button to copy and paste things here. You can also use the Windows shortcut keys to accomplish the same thing throughout everything here. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And then we'll change the word here. And we'll use together. So now that sounds pretty cool. Uh, and I almost forgot here. If you made any change that you didn't like, then you can just simply use the undo feature right here by this button. So I can just go back uh, to before I made any changes. And the more I press this button, the further I can go back. And obviously, I can redo those changes if I want to by pressing the button right next to it here. And I can just go back to where we left off. So we were about to do something about the picture. But the picture doesn't really fit the words, right? It's stronger together, but I don't see one person here. So let me see if I can find a picture that shows a bunch of people exercising together. And I kind of want to keep the background, but I just want to put another picture over it. So let's go over to the graphics tab instead of the backgrounds tab and select the photos sub tab here and this time i'm going to use the keyword exercise and maybe it'll show a group of people exercising instead of just fitness and i kind of like this one i think um yeah let's just go for it uh, so we'll select it and it pops on top of our image over here and we can stretch it out or you know shrink it down a little bit by using the handles and then we'll reposition it around here. See if that works. That looks okay. Um, I kind of want it here, but it's covering our words and most of the background. So that's not cool. So let me go ahead and remove that. So now I got to find that picture again, which is a real pain. So what I could have done was to add it to my favorites. So I don't have to go through looking for it again. But let's go and find it real quick. And once you find the picture, all you got to do is just hover over the picture and click on the little star in the corner down here. And so now it was going to be in our favorites tab up here. So if we needed to use that picture again, it'll be in this section. So we don't have to go around searching for it. But before clicking on that picture, let's go ahead and see what we could do about, you know, making it smaller. Because there, what we actually wanted was just the people on that picture. We didn't really need all the the background colors and all the other stuff. So let's see what we can do here. So if you look at the picture here, if you go into the corner, you'll see that there's a little button for crop and rotate. And that option is typically not available in the background tab, but you can find it here in the graphics tab. So let's go ahead and click on that crop icon now. And now you can just go ahead and adjust the errors that you want from the picture by dragging these little handles down below on, uh, actually it's all over the picture actually. And I think it looks pretty good here. So let's go ahead and click apply. And then you go ahead and click the accept changes. And it's going to put our image in the uploads tab after you accept the changes. Now if you click on it. And you can see that all the unneeded spaces are gone. So let's try the same adjustments again. And I'm going to turn my grid lines on to help me center it a little bit better. 
and it kind of looks good right there, but it's still covering my words. So every item that you put on your workspace is a layer. So every text we add or every graphic that we add is its own layer, like on a cake. So right now my words are stuck in the middle of the layer of the cake and I want to bring it to the top so people can see it. So what we can do is to push the top layer back so that the middle layers can come up front. So I am just going to click on this top layer right here that we just added and I'll click on the icon up top here to move the layer back. Now one of our words is back up but uh, our first one is still stuck behind so we'll go ahead and move that layer one more time and now both words are in front. It still doesn't look that good. Let me go ahead and make some adjustments here real quick. And now will be a good time to take a quick break and click that like button and subscribe to my channel. And just remember, your clicks means a lot in supporting this channel. So thanks in advance. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Um, let me remove these zones so that we can see the whole picture. Yeah, I, I, I think that looks pretty nice, but it's kind of bland. Hmm. Let's see what else we can do here. Let's go and browse around the graphics area again. And uh, let's see what we can find in icons here. Okay, so this icon with the person lifting weights is kind of cool kind of matches our profile what we're trying to do and let's see how we can incorporate into our design so the icon kind of reminds me of the letter T so maybe I could replace the T in together uh, with this icon so we'll click on the text and delete that T And we'll toggle the zone back on and readjust the text because it's probably going to be off-centered. Uh, and now let's resize the icon to kind of match the word. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that right there is not horrible. All right, so let's go ahead and match the icon color to the color of the word. And we'll just click on the word and copy the color hex over here. And then we'll click on the icon and then paste that hex code into here. And there we go. And the only thing that sucks is that there's no option for me to drop a shadow on my icon. But I got an idea. Let's uh, go ahead and copy the icon like we normally do. And now let's click on one of the words. And now we go down to the shadow area and copy the hex from the shadow color palette. And then go back to the icon and that we just copied and then we'll just go ahead and paste that hex for the uh, the copy icon right here and while we're here let's go ahead and save that color just in case we might need it later and we'll click on the edit button down here click on the plus icon and paste your hex code right here and then we'll x out of that and then press the save colors button all right so let's go back to that new icon that we just made and we're going to position it in in a way that kind of imitates the shadow like it's on our text but this time it's going to be underneath our icon here and I might need to zoom in a little bit to see it better we'll just use the slider down here and we'll move it around a little bit here and I think that looks pretty good right there uh, now we can't blur the icon like we did with the letters but we can change its opacity to make it a little bit less harsh so let's click on the icon and then change it to about 75% opacity. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then we'll move it back one layer. Now it looks like there is a shadow uh, on top of the letter. So we'll go ahead and move that back one more layer. Yeah, let's let's zoom this back out and we'll toggle off the zones real quick. And okay, and I, I think that looks pretty good if I don't say so myself. And you know, I... I, I did see another icon when I was browsing a little bit that we could probably use for our letter R here. And maybe the end, the, maybe that letter R at the end of stronger, we'll probably replace that with the same way we did with the, um, the letter T here. So let me try to do that. 
Now, where did I see that thing? Let's see here. There's an icon. I there it is. Cool. So I'm gonna put that there. Just gonna move it over here a bit. Get rid of this R. And let me resize this image a little bit to kind of make it look a little better. Looks okay right there, I think. Yeah, it looks that looks fine. I'm gonna change the color. And duplicate it and make a shadow for it. And I think right there is okay. Maybe a little bit lower here. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, let me go ahead and drop that shadow behind the icon. There you go. And I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, is it too much? I mean, probably. But, you know, I'll go with it since, you know, I like it. Alright, so now that I look at it, I think it looks pretty good. But I kind of want a background picture that's more centered. And the words are covering some of the important parts of the picture. So, uh, let's see what we can do about this. Let me see. Let's go ahead and import a picture from our own library. Uh, into the background or maybe even a graphic photo and I have a photo that I saved on my computer that I think just might work perfect for this so I'm gonna go into the backgrounds tab here and head over to the uploads tab this time and once I click on the button I'm gonna go open up a window on my computer somewhere and I don't know where you store your photos but I know where I put mine so I'm gonna browse through my pictures and I'm gonna hit OK so now I can use that picture as a background and I'm going to go ahead and select it here and then I'll change my background picture nice I think that looks pretty cool the stronger word looks a bit too bright and while we're at it uh, I think we'll change that fitness word and icon into a different color um, let's let's click on the letters here and then click on the color palette and then we'll click on the orange color here I think that looks pretty good, but maybe we'll make it a little bit darker. So we'll go and click on custom over here and see what that looks like. And something like maybe this. I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah, and you know what? I think I, I do like that. So we'll go ahead and save this color into our palette so that we have it. I'll just copy this right here, edit it, add here, paste the hex, and save. Now, let me see. I'll click on the icon here and I'll make that the same orange. I'll just use my save color now. Same thing with the letters. Use the save color and the next icon too. Cool. Now that's looking too re pretty respectable, I think. And I think it looks pretty good right there. And let's toggle on my zones to see if everything looks all right. And the letters seem to fit and everything looks pretty much centered to where I like it. And I just kind of noticed something here too. The outline of the image kind of looks like a starfish or, or a star. Uh, or it could even be considered like an X too. So that's kind of cool. But uh, I'm pretty happy about that. So let's go ahead and save it. But uh, let's see here. Let's, let's rename it first by going up here and hitting the edit button right here and then we'll call it um, fitness Facebook cover or something like that and then we'll click on the save button over here and it will go into your save folder up here we just go up to the menus and then it should be right here at the save folders all right so let's say you want to use that same image that we created for another platform other than Facebook um, let's go ahead and reopen our save image here and then we'll go up to the top to the resize button right here and when you select it, a pop-up will come up and you can resize the image to anything you want. You can have it customized or you can choose one of the uh, preset templates down here as well. And let's say you want to use the image for a YouTube thumbnail. And uh, we'll just scroll down here a bit and choose that thumbnail preset here. 
and once you click on it, it's going to ask you to choose if you want to override the current picture or open a new graphic. So we want to keep our image for our Facebook page, but we'll make a new one to use for our thumbnail. So we'll select that one instead. And then we'll click on the view the image. And there you have it. Your thumbnail is right here and you can adjust it a little bit here. We'll do a look, a control A on the keyboard to select all the items on the image right now. And then we'll just drag it down to the center a little bit. And it looks pretty good right there. So, and now we can literally just use that same uh, image that we created earlier for a thumbnail. So our cover image is pretty much completed and let's go over and create our profile picture. And we're going to go back here and click on the create a graphic again. And one thing that you don't see here is a preset for profile pictures or logos. Um, but that's all right. We'll, we can just go ahead and create a custom size to create our logo. And I'll throw up on the screen somewhere that uh, the recommended sizes for some popular platforms here. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and create a custom size here and I'm going to use the 400 by 400 pixels. And I've been able to use this size for multiple platforms other than Facebook, like uh, in uh, Pinterest, I think. Yeah, Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, and probably a few other ones that uh, might work. But who knows when they decide to change the formats for them. But if they do, all you got to do is just, you know, go back in here and make some small adjustments to the size here. And it will work just fine. So let's click on the Create button. And it's the same deal. Um, it has all these same functions as creating the cover that we just did, except on a smaller canvas. All right, so let's say you want to use a picture of yourself for your profile. Uh, you can always upload it and make some adjustments as needed. And I'm going to use one of their pictures from their libraries just so that you can see. So instead of selecting the background this time, I'm going to go and use the graphic photo to simulate an uploaded picture. So I'm going to click on the graphics tab here and I'll click the photo tab and I'll put in exercise to find a picture here and let's see what we can use. And this one looks pretty good. So instead of clicking on it, I want to click on the corner and crop and rotate it. And you can use the whole picture if you want, but I only want the face of my profile here. So I'll grab the little handles again and move it to the position that I want. And I think that looks pretty good right there. And you have two options at this point. You can leave it as a square item or you could change it to a circle crop by selecting the button down here. And that changes it to a circle, but then you have to re resize it again, but that's not a big deal. And it's completely fine whether you choose one or the other because most of the platforms will scale and center the image for you but it might not look the best depending on the image size that you use. And I noticed that uh, they like using these circle images for your profile. So um, we'll go ahead and use that and we'll make some adjustments here. And that looks pretty good there. So we'll just go ahead and click apply and we'll accept the changes. And once you do accept the changes, it'll save it into our uploads tab here. So now if you click on it, it'll drop it over to our canvas and turn on the grid lines just uh, to see how that looks. And then we'll also turn on snap too, uh, if it isn't already on. And then we'll just snap the image to the corner of the canvas here. And then we'll grab the opposite handle here and we'll drag it to the opposite end of the edge of the canvas. Nice. I think that looks pretty good to me. So now this is just my preference, but you can definitely use an uh, image uh, as is, but uh, I like to add one more thing to it to make it look more interesting. And I'm going to go over here to the shapes tab right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select an empty circle and I'm going to stretch it to nearly the edge of my picture like so. And now I'm going to increase its border width a little bit by maybe, let's say, 15. That looks okay right there. And I'm going to change its color to 
Oh, uh, maybe a uh, light gray. Yeah, I'll change it to a light gray. And then I'm going to change its opacity to 50%. Now, uh, let's go ahead and toggle the grid lines off. And I think that looks pretty good. Gives a little bit more depth. So I'm going to go ahead and name it real quick. And I'm going to save it. All right, so what if you don't want to use a photo yourself? And I got you covered there too. So let's go ahead and say that you want to create some sort of a logo instead. Um, and I always like to start fresh because sometimes when I reuse the same canvas, I would accidentally save over on one of my designs. So let's go ahead and create a new canvas. Now we're just going to go ahead and click the menu drop down right here and select create a graphic. All right, so I'm going to use the circle again just because that's my preference. But this time I'm going to use a filled circle. And I'm going to do the exact same thing as we did before. I'm going to turn on snap here and I'm going to turn on grids. And I'm going to go ahead and put this circle in the top corner again. And I'm going to drag it to the opposite end until it fills my canvas. All right, so maybe I have like a fitness brand that I want to promote. And maybe this fitness brand is called something like... Um, I don't know, we'll call it uh, HVX Fitness. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, that's fine. So uh, I'm a pretty simple guy when it comes to logo design. So I'm just going to use those exact words as part of my logo. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, add some text to it here. And we'll choose heading again. And I can't see the word, so I'll probably change that to a lighter color here. Let's go with the white or something. Maybe like a gray. All right, and um, let's change the text real quick. Change the HVX here. And we'll just resize this uh, spacing. Oh, well, first we'll change the font. And then, yeah, we'll go back and change that. So I'm not going to see it until I pull the spacing over here. Size on this end first, and then we'll go over the other side and we'll do the same thing. Basically try to get it within the frame. That looks pretty good. And then we'll copy this. And we'll change that to fitness. We'll kind of center it a little bit here. I kind of want to yeah, maybe up a little bit right here. And that's fine for now, I guess. Now let me make this bigger here. I'm going to change this font to 150 and just kind of kind of match the fitness word length. Let me, let me adjust this line height here. We don't need it to be that big. Looks pretty good there. It's not centered, but it's fine for now, I guess. Let me see. Yeah, let me just add another circle like we did earlier. And I'm going to change the color to like that same gray. Oops, no, that's, uh, I don't want to fill color. Let me put, uh, let me reset that. I'm gonna select the solid color and then select no fill. Okay. Now the border is what I want. All right, so I give that that same gray color. It looks good. And go to, maybe I'll leave that at this, but I'll put the circle 
around the rim, the rim again, but this time I won't go all the way to the edge. And I'll let the snap kind of do its job right there, and I'll pull it to the other end. And that looks pretty good there. And try to center it a little bit. And that looks okay, but it's kind of a little bit this way, maybe. Yes. That's the one thing about the snap function that it's, it's kind of finicky. So sometimes I like to turn it off. But that looks pretty good right there. All right. So let me just go ahead and change it to orange. Yeah, I think that looks cooler. And I'm probably gonna change, make it a little bit. No, actually, I no, I think I'll leave it at that. And then I'll move it to the back here so I can get to the words. And then I'll try to readjust it a little bit more. Maybe go up a little bit of font. Looks like a match right there. A little bit less, kind of just barely touching. Now let me turn off the grid here I mean the snap yeah let me turn off the snap so that I can kind of center it a little bit better there you go so it's kind of touching the the orange rim I think that looks pretty good I'm kind of measuring like the uh, the grid lines from the top to bottom it seems like there's more space on the bottom there so maybe I'll move the fitness down a little bit to kind of also barely touches and move this down a little bit more move a little bit further down here or something change the line space and then that looks okay I kind of like that so it, it's kind of symmetric with the words in length anyway. Looks pretty cool there. Looks like the, it's in fairly even, not perfect, but fairly even. But let's give it this T here. And we use that same logo that we did earlier, or well, the icon anyway, to give it that T. Uh, graphics. Let's go look for that real quick. Put an exercise again. Where's that thing? I should have saved it earlier. Oh, let me save it now. Kind of center it a little bit. Try to make resize this little guy here. Uh, still seems a little bit bigger. Let me get yeah, there's something like that. Move it up. I'm gonna click on the word here because now it's behind it now. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm just gonna move it one. Okay, and I'm just gonna get rid of this T. I'm gonna press the space bar to give it room. And I'll keep pressing until it kind of matches what I want. That looks pretty good there. Except when I did that, now the letters are a little bit out of line, or well, at least where I want it to be. Let's see here. Maybe I'll change this font a little bit here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. One more, one up. Move it over a little bit. And move that back. I'll move this up a little bit just to kind of make it look presentable here. And 
and I'll change the color to orange too. So that looks that start to look pretty cool now. Yeah, everything is kind of where I want it to be. Turn off the grids, take a look. Nice. Now you can definitely use that as your logo too. Um, I think it looks really nice. But you know, you can have to. I I just don't like. Let me just change this a little bit to kind of hit that corner here. And there, I there you go. You literally have a logo that you could use for anything you want. So, but I don't like. Let me see if I can toggle the grids back on a little bit. It feels. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of all the white space or the empty space there. So I am gonna put some shapes in here. I'm gonna add me some triangles. I'm gonna change that triangle to the orange color again. Oh, yeah, this time I can use the fill, and I use my save color. And uh, the border. I don't think there's anything good here in the borders that we could use. I mean, yes, we can, can definitely change certain things, make it nicer if you want in borders, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to leave it a solid, no border. And I'm going to pull, well, let me change the snap on. And I'm going to pull it down to here and resize it. Kind of center a little bit here. Like that. That looks pretty good. Center it and kind of match it to this outer circle without going over. And there you go. So I'm going to duplicate this and do it a few more times just to fill in that empty space. Uh, let me see here. Let me duplicate that. And then there's that little, kind of like a little circle thing that you can use to rotate the shape. Um, so I'm going to rotate that a little bit, kind of get it to an angle. Let's try to snap that onto the circle. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I'll duplicate that and do it for the other side as well. And I'll do this for the top too, but let me see here. And I'm going to fast forward this a little bit and I'll meet you back in a second. And I think that looks pretty even, looks pretty good. Um, and it does look kind of like a cogwheel a little bit. And let me turn all these off and there you go. And this is the final product. Now you have yourself a logo or a profile picture you can use for your business. And I think that looks pretty good. Pretty good. All right, so might as well uh, go ahead and rename this real quick. We'll call it something like fitness logo. And we'll go ahead and save that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the downloads here. So we already have this done. And let's go ahead and click on the download button over here. And you'll see a couple of different options here. You'll have the lowest resolution, which is the web optimized JPEG. And that's, you know, obviously if you plan on using this on a website, you want the lowest resolution without losing too much quality, but you will lose a little bit of quality here if you use this option. And then you have the higher res PNG. And then you'll have two other retina um, options here. So these options here, all it really does is double the size of this. So it'll say this JPEG right here would double the size of this. Uh, JPEG right here. So imagine this, your pixel right here. So we have 400 by 400 for this uh, logo design right here. If you use on the Retina PNG right here, it'll double that size, right? Or double the JPEG size. So it'd be 800 by 800 pixels instead. Um, so for this option here, we want to use the transparent uh, background here. So we'll click on that. And once you click on that, what that really does is uh, it removes this white part or whatever color this background color is. So basically the background. So whatever you use as your background option, it will be transparent. It will be invisible. So it will only show the logo itself, which is a, a good thing. And when you, you choose it, you see that two of them are crossed out here. So you can only choose this, the high res PNG or the retina PNG. And typically, uh, since we're using the list this design or this logo for uh, small applications on the web. We're not using it as a, a primary thing. We're using it as like a profile picture, something quite small. So um, you can use the high res PNG. And when you click on it, it's going to download into your bar right here. All right, so let's go ahead and download the rest of the uh, other ones that we just created.
And we click on the menu here in our save graphics that we saved. And let's choose the other profile pick here. And we'll download that. And we'll choose transparent background for this one and high res. There it is on the corner here. And we'll do it with the other, um, our, I guess our cover photo as well. So let's go back into our save graphics. To click on this. And I'll just remove this real quick. Just make sure I think it looks good. And it looks pretty good. So let's download this one as well. And this one we won't use the transparent background. We'll actually use the double size because I kind of want it to be a little bit higher quality for our cover. And remember, it's just doubling the our pixel size. That's all it's really doing. All right, so let's say I want to download another design or anything else for that matter. Like, let's say I want a lower resolution of the cover I just downloaded. And I'll go over here and click on download here again. And I'm met with the option to upgrade. So this is another limitation of the free version. And you are only allowed to download three graphics per month. And we'll have to talk on more about this in a minute. But uh, let's head back over to our Facebook page and upload the images that we do have to see what that looks like. All right, so we are over here at my Facebook fitness page that I created for my business here. And uh, you can see that I have nothing going on here. So let's go ahead and add our uh, pictures that we created. So we'll do our cover first here. We'll edit this. So I'll click on my cover photo and I'll click on open. And it's going to load it right there. And, you know, we can drag it into position or whatever here. So it's going to cover a little bit here, but I want that to be in the center here. So I'll just drag it down just a little bit. And I'll save the changes. And that looks pretty cool there. And I'll do the same for my profile picture here too. Click on that. We'll edit the profile picture. And I will upload a picture. And it'll pop open that again. And for this, I'll choose my logo. Click OK. That looks pretty good right there. I'll click Save. Of course, you can add a description, but that's what it's going to look like. And I think that looks pretty cool. And we'll go over to my personal page here, and we'll do the same. And we'll add a cover photo again. And we'll put that in there. Drag it to position. See, so that's, see, the the cool thing about this drag position is that this right here is different than the per, uh, business page there. So it's going to cover some of our too. So I'm going to move it up just a smidge in here, right there. I think that looks pretty cool. And I'll do the same for my profile picture here. I'll upload a photo. And I'll use the profile picture this time. Upload that. That looks pretty cool. And I'll save it. And there you go. Now you have a complete picture of you know yourself here or whatever and your cover photo for both pages, for your personal page and uh and my fitness page. And I think that looks pretty awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and head back and talk about the um, free version versus the paid version. All right, so here we are at the prices page, and it's pretty straightforward. The main things that differ from the paid version and the free version are in the center right here. And the major and obvious one is the unlimited downloads versus the three per month that you get with the free version. And the pro version, you can connect your social media or integrate and post your graphics directly to your social media accounts without actually having to leave Snappa, which is pretty cool. And you can also add custom fonts that you might have and you can remove images from backgrounds that, you know, could be really extremely helpful if you want to use a certain part of the image, which would have been helpful earlier for us. And right next to that is the team version, which is everything the pro has but you can add up to five users that can see your saved images and help make changes. And for any reason you're not happy with their service, they do offer a 30 day refund. So keep that in mind if you do decide to make a purchase on one of the paid plans. 
So the prices that you see on screen right now are yearly or annual prices that you would pay up front. Uh, but if you click on the switch up here, you can see that changes to monthly prices. So basically you save 33% if you choose the entire year up front versus the monthly payment plans. And I would say that the prices are reasonable for what you get with the pro version. It's pretty competitive, if not cheaper than a few other of their competitors. And as far as the free version goes, the main thing that falls short to competitors free version is the limited amount of downloads that you get. But the trade off is that you get free transparent backgrounds without having to upgrade. And you know, I get it, but you know, you kind of have to pick and choose what battles you fight here. Snapper is fairly intuitive and easy to use. And it took me a while to create these images because I wanted to break down some of the process of the service and help you under guys understand some of the nuances as well. But after you get used to the layout and utilize their pre-made templates, you can create these images in just like a few minutes. And the hardest part isn't the service itself, it's the design process. And that's why I wanted to walk you guys through not only the service itself, but to also give you guys some ideas on designs on how you can do it for your own graphics. A couple of things that I hope Snapple improves upon. I would like them to emit shadows and offsets for all their icons and vectors. I actually use them quite often and I like to see that get implemented. I would like to see the crop and rotate feature for not only the graphics section, but for the background images as well. Uh, the amount of presets they have worked pretty well for the most part, but I would like to see a few more preset templates for like more platforms, but it's not a big deal because I can just, you know, customize the size for myself and maybe download options that allow for higher resolutions other than HD, like maybe 4k resolutions. And I wouldn't say these are negatives, but I'm just nitpicking because sometimes I want it for a certain project and honestly, it's not like really a need, but it's just a wish list. As far as recommendations go, you guys can already guess that I personally use this service for my needs and I'm definitely not sponsored by Snapple to make this video. But even if I was, my views and opinions haven't changed. And what I can say is just to try out the free version first and then make some free custom images for yourself. And if it's something that's going to fit your needs and you want to be able to use all of its features in the long term, then go ahead and get the paid versions. And if you do decide to get the paid versions, then do consider using my affiliate link in the description below. It costs you nothing to use, and if you do make that purchase, then I'll receive a commission for it, and it really helps support this channel. So thanks in advance. And if you like this type of content, then hitting that like button will go a long way in supporting this channel. And feel free to subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you know once my next video gets released. I hope that you found this video was helpful, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.